Yeah, that's easiest to see probably in the liver. Uh, the um, Zyatec has demonstrated that there is a flowing from the portal vein side of the uh, mm-hmm. lobule in the liver, right. uh, moving the cells towards the uh, the vein in the center of the lobule. Uh, but um, about 50, more than 50 years ago, L.P. Polyshayev was demonstrating uh, that kind of renewal in uh, uh, muscle cells and even brain cells, and uh, showing that even mature neurons, uh, given the right kind of stimulation, can undergo mitosis and, and become new cells. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the current places where where this is important is the idea of adrenal fatigue that a lot of people are talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, it it um, ultimately derives from the idea of Addison's disease and a misinterpretation of Hans Selye's uh, stress research in which he showed that very intense stress uh, would cause the adrenal glands to uh, enlarge and even bleed and then die, and then the animal would die. Uh, But um, if if the stress is moderate, um, the uh, adrenal is is very good at at renewing itself. Um, You can demonstrate the total renewal of the adrenal cortex by scooping out the contents. Everything that's inside the capsule of the adrenal gland can be scooped out, and the cells of the inside of the capsule, the fibrous capsule, Mm -hmm. uh, there's a layer of cells that will multiply, and they will, within about three months, produce a fully structured and new adrenal gland. Wow. <laughs> and so it, it's the same idea as uh, uh, the pancreas renewing itself if you give it a chance. Right. And uh, the same logic that you can see in in the, the feedback systems of uh, sugar and glucagon and uh, uh, the uh, shift to um, insulin in proportion to the available sugar in the adrenal gland, the uh, cells that are near the capsule are the cells that produce uh, uh, aldosterone or the other the class of mineral uh, steroids, mineral regulating steroids. Uh, the, as they mature and stream towards the center, uh, they <coughs> turn into uh, another layer that produces cortisol and the glucocorticoids. Right. And uh, then at the last stage, they produce the androgens and sex steroids. And they um, know, it's amazing how one cell knows how to differentiate into all those different types of cells to produce different hormones. And it happens that uh, the things that are most uh, stress-producing, like uh, serotonin, for example, uh, or shock uh, will turn on the activity of the uh, glomerulosa layer that produces the aldosterone. And aldosterone intensifies uh, some of these defensive stress reactions. And uh, the people are now starting to uh, speak of it as an endogenous toxin that, that <laughs> activates so many of these stress reactions. Wow. But serotonin is a major factor in turning it on. But it's the first thing produced. And as the organism starts surviving, if it can get past that shock stage uh, with adequate sugar, then uh, the, the glucocorticoids are produced. And finally, the sex steroids, which uh, aren't needed if, if you're going to be <clears throat> in shock and uh, uh, starving to death and so on. So the, the, They're the, the least important um, in the emergency mode, but the most yeah. important in a healthy mode. Yeah. So this is why it's so important to eat optimal nutritionally 
eat optimal nutrition so that all of your cells can function normally and healthily and regenerate. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, when you um, are in this healthy state um, producing an abundance of progesterone and testosterone, for example, uh, these turn off the aldosterone production. So once you achieve uh, the mature, happy state, uh, then even though your your cells are still there and they're still streaming, uh, their function is inhibited the same way that sugar inhibits the function of the glucagon-producing cells. 